Contingency tables provide a really nice way to organize the information in a research study to help us quickly and more efficiently calculate various probabilities. A contingency table organizes information in rows and columns with totals. So for example, if we did a research study and asked a bunch of people if they used the cell phone in the car, and we asked people if they received a ticket in the past year. And we can organize the information of this research study into a contingency table. We might have one row for cell phone users, one row for people who use no cell phone in the car, a column for people who got a ticket, and a column for people who got no ticket. And to make this a proper contingency table, we'll also have a column for the totals and a row for the totals. And so that gives us this nice 3 by 3 grid to organize all the information of this study on. Let's say there were 25 people who got a ticket and used a cell phone. There were 280 people who did not get a ticket and used a cell phone. And if we add that up, we get 305 people total who used the cell phone. There were 45 people who got a ticket and did not use a cell phone. There were 405 people who did not get a ticket and did not use a cell phone. And if I add that up, we get 450 people total who use no cell phone. We can also add the columns up, and we get 70 people who got a ticket. We get 685 people who got no ticket. And then for the overall total, if we add these together, we get 755 people total in our sample space. We're going to use this table to help us calculate a bunch of probabilities. Our first question is going to be, what's the probability that a randomly chosen person from this study used their cell phone in the car? Well, we see cell phones in the first row, and the total number of cell phone users is 305. The total number of people in the study was 755. So we can take 305 and divide it by 755 to get that probability that a random person used the cell phone in the car of 0 0.4040. Let's ask a similar question. Let's ask what's the probability that a random person did not get a ticket. Well, if I want someone who did not get a ticket, I see the no tickets are in the second column. The total number of no tickets is 685. And we divide that by the total number of people in the study, which is also 755. 685 out of 755 gives us a probability of 0.9073. Let's see if we can combine these together then to get some compound probabilities. What's the probability that a randomly selected person used the cell phone in the car or they got no tickets? If you remember our formula from the or probabilities, we look at the probability of the first group, which is those who use the cell phone in the car, which we already know is 305 out of 755. And we add to it the probability of the second event, the probability a person got no tickets. Well, the no ticket total is 685 out of 755. But then we need to subtract off where they overlapped. And where we see both cell phone and no ticket overlapping is in this middle cell that covers both the cell phone and no tickets. Those 280 people out of 755 total were counted in both groups. So we need to subtract those off to get our final probability 
of cell phone or no ticket to be 0 0.9404. So that's the proportion of people in our study that either use their cell phone in the car or receive no tickets. Next one we're going to look at is the and probability. What's the probability that a random person used their phone and received no tickets? Well, the and wants to know where they both overlap. We're overlapping cell phone and no tickets with these 280 people that are in both the column for no ticket and the row for no cell phone. And we're comparing that to the entire group, so we'll divide by the 755. And 280 divided by 755 is 0.3709. Is the probability that a randomly selected person used the cell phone in the car and did not get a ticket. Let's look at how that compares both mathematically and process-wise to a different question. Let's compare that to the probability someone used their cell phone in the car given they have no tickets. Now the conditional probability changes quite a bit of things. When we see this no tickets, that means that we already know the person had no tickets. We don't care about anybody else. The only thing that exists for this problem is the no ticket column. And we're asking, of those no ticket people, what's the probability that they use the phone in the car? Well, the phone people are the 280. But it's important to note the big difference with the given is the total is 685, because we're just looking at the no ticket group. That's what the condition of given no tickets means. So when we do 280 divided by 685, we get 0 0.4088 is the probability that someone used their phone given they got no ticket. Notice how that is different than letter D where we wanted the phone and no ticket, but we were comparing it to the entire population, not just the no ticket group. And we can switch the order of the condition. We can ask, what's the probability that someone got no tickets given they use their cell phone in the car? And that's going to be a completely different question. Now the given information is they use the cell phone in the car. So the only thing that exists for this problem is that cell phone row, that first row. And in that cell phone row, we want to know how many have no tickets. Well, again, that's 280. But this time, it's out of the phone total. It's out of the 305, because we divide by the given information. So no tickets given they use the cell phone in the car is 0 0.9180 probability. Using these contingency tables is nice because it makes a more direct way to find those probabilities that we're looking for.